If I told you about her, what would I say? I wonder. The Shape of Water is the latest Guillermo del Toro movie, and it's about a mute janitor, played by Sally Hawkins, who falls in love with a aquatic creature mm -hmm. in the 1960s. One of the things we really enjoyed about this film was the aesthetic, the look of this film. The dark tones it played with really immersed you in this 1960s world from the props, set pieces, the laboratory that they worked in, the apartments that they inhabited, and just the cars, the feel, everything about it. It was a really nice tone and setting to the overall fabric of the film. Along with the tone, the movie has a very classic feel to it. It almost seems like it was set in the 1950s, referencing the 1960s. It has a really great melodrama feel to it. The love interest, the way everything is very theatrical. And you also have the love interests, which are very, which are very prominent in 1950s, not so much 60s, but 1950s films. And I love how they brought that in with different characters. It wasn't just one love interest. There was different love interests throughout this movie. If you think back to a lot of the films made in the 50s and some in the 60s, especially the ones coming out of America, some in the UK, there was always mm -hmm. some kind of love interest. Not necessarily the main vehicle for the story, but it always popped up somewhere throughout the film. The movie had elements of romance, it had elements of suspense, and it had elements of sci-fi. Mm -hmm. So these three genres were very apparent in this movie. The problem was none of these three were really hammered home enough. And I mm -hmm. feel like if they were, we would like this movie a lot more. Mm -hmm. This movie is essentially a tapas plate versus an actual meal. You share this plate with these three elements, and although they are done well, they're not bad elements to have in a movie. I wanted full courses with each of them, or at least one or two of them. It's like a sampler plate. I don't want the sampler plate. I don't want the rib tips. Nope. I want the whole steak. Give me the steak. Along with them not diving deep enough into the three genres, I feel like they also didn't dive enough into the backstory of the main character. Mm -hmm. Now she is a mute and she begins communicating with this aquatic creature through mm -hmm. sign language. And in the movie, they allude to the fact that he is the only one that doesn't see a problem with her. She's right. always seen as someone who's uh, missing something, obviously her voice. And she thinks that this aquatic creature loves her for who she is. And that's mm -hmm. something, that's a true connection that she has with this creature. Mm -hmm. That's the basis of the movie. However, we don't get much of her backstory through the movie. Kind of just placed into this laboratory and she's a janitor. We mm -hmm. kind of just know that she's a mute, but we didn't, we weren't shown a lot of her hardships and a lot of the problems that she went through growing up as a kid, not being loved or right. feeling like an outcast. And I feel like if they gave her much better backstory that it would hit home better for her love with this aquatic creature. Mm -hmm. Now, Michael Shannon plays this government official who has captured this aquatic creature from the shores of, I can't remember, somewhere near Rainforest, Fiji, something like that. Who knows? But he's captured this creature, brought it back to this laboratory in the USA to get an upper hand on the Russian Federation. Now, the thing about his character is that he's supposed to be menacing. He's the main antagonist of the film. He is the one we are supposed to fear. And although Michael Shannon does a great job with what he's given with the screenplay, I didn't get that menacing feeling from him. I wasn't scared of him at any time of this movie. I didn't feel like he was the person to stop this whole operation. I just kind of felt like, yeah, he's a hurdle, but he's not anything that I feel can really be a cog in the machine for this particular story. So my final rating for this film is an eight out of 10. What this movie did well, was everything. It wasn't a bad movie whatsoever. You did have your suspense in there. You did have your love interest in there. And you had this beautiful backdrop in the Cold War, the setting, everything was brought alive. And there was a lot of things I really enjoyed about this film. The drawbacks were, it didn't dabble enough into one or two enough to really push a certain agenda or a genre or just a very streamlined story. It's a very simple, piece of cinema and I do like that in a certain way but I feel like he has such imaginative interest in most of his films if he would have pushed that a little more this easily could have been a nine nine and a half for me 
that's what Pan's Labyrinth was for me. It was that movie that set the tone, set a boundary and pushed it. And you really didn't know what you were getting yourself into. This one, I felt like I could kind of call the ending and I kind of felt where things were going and I was able to predict things here and there. And it wasn't necessarily a bad thing, but I wanted him to go out of pocket like he's done so many times before. And we didn't exactly get that, but overall still a solid movie. As for my final score, I give this a seven and a half out of 10. So when I was watching the trailer for this movie, I saw it was a Guillermo del Toro movie and mm -hmm. I, was, I was thinking it's gonna be crazy. Right. Now, I saw the preview and when you see the preview, it's a pretty simple story. And the simple story is the movie. That is the movie. But I was expecting a huge twist. I was expecting something crazy, mm -hmm. something off the wall. And you don't really get that. No. But I mean, in the end, you still get a very solid movie, a gorgeous looking movie mm -hmm. with a very good story, mm -hmm. um, great acting. Mm -hmm. So through and through, there's nothing really wrong with the movie. But at the same time, I wanted more and I feel like there was certain things they could have changed or mm. a certain layer they could have added to make this movie Pan's Labyrinth-esque, uh, that level of just Oscar worthy. Well, that was our review for The Shape of Water from Guillermo del Toro. If you liked the movie or if you have any comments or any questions about the movie, please comment below. We'll be back next time for another video review. Please uh, subscribe, thumbs up, and uh, we'll see you guys next time.